at Maths Explained, is it all right if I send a few questions that I was stuck on? Absolutely, Sage. Please send them through. That is why I'm here. I love to see those questions. Uh, so let's have a look then. This one says AEC is a right angle triangle. B is a point on AC and D is a point on EC. DB is parallel to EA. The area of triangle BCD is 5 centimeters squared. The area of triangle EBD is 15 centimeters squared. Work out the area of the triangle ABE. You must show all your working. Okie doke. Um, so uh, the parallel lines are already indicated on the diagram and the right angle triangle also. The areas we can draw in. So BCD is here. That's 5 centimeters squared. EBD is this one, that's 15 centimeters squared. And we're looking for this area ABE. Okay, so there is a key piece of information you need to uh, fill in or you need to figure out from these areas. So if you want a clue, I'll give a little clue now. If you want to keep thinking, I encourage you to pause the video and have a go and see if you can identify what relationship you can find using these areas. Okay, so here's the clue. Uh, it's to do with the relating areas to linear scale factors. Okay, so if you want to have another thing now, uh, continue to do so. Um, but I'm going to continue with the solution then. So the key thing you need to identify given these areas is that because these two triangles um, have the same height and they are right triangles, they must be right triangles because these lines are parallel and this is a 90 degree angle. So these are right triangles. They have the same height, therefore we can say something about their bases. Okay, in order for this area 15 to be three times greater than the area of five, this base here, ED, must be three times greater than DC. Okay, uh, so let's say we called this um, K, this must be 3K. Okay, so that those areas allow us to say something about um, uh, the, the ratio of those lines. From here, there's a couple ways you can proceed, um, but uh, I'm going to start off by drawing a line from B to the line EA and creating another two triangles here. I'll call this point X. Okay, this right triangle, uh, this line, by the way, is parallel to ED. So this triangle EXB is going to be congruent to BED. These two triangles are exactly the same, or the angles are the same, or the lengths are the same. So this area is going to be 15. And now I'm looking for this area AXB up here. All right, what can we say about the triangle AXB? What can we say about this right triangle? Uh, well, it's, it's going to be related to BDC. In fact, they're similar because all of the angles are the same. These angles are the same and these two angles are the same because those lines are parallel. Okay, so those two triangles are similar. By the way, we're going to have to write all this down in a moment. Um, and what can we say about similar triangles? Uh, it's something to do with the, the scale factors. So this is the other key piece of information to solve this, this problem. Uh, it's to do with the relationship between the linear scale factor and the scale factor of the areas. I think you need to use this to solve this. Uh, so the fact that we're going to use here is that the area scale factor, the area scale factor is equal to the linear scale factor, the linear scale factor squared. Um, and this in fact allows us to find this area up here uh, because we know DC Whatever length that is, we need to multiply that by 3 to get XB because XB is equal to ED. Okay, so DC multiplied by 3 gives us XB. So let's go ahead and write that down. So DC multiplied by 3 equals ED equals XB. So that is the linear scale factor between these two similar triangles. Therefore, we can find the area scale factor. So let's write area SF. That's going to be the linear scale factor squared, which is nine. And then all we need to do to find the area of AXB, so area of triangle AXB, B is uh, multiply the area of BDC by that scale factor. So five times nine 
equals 45 centimeters squared. And then we can uh, easily find the area of ABE by simply adding 15 and 45. So the area of uh, a triangle ABE is equal to 45 plus 15. These two areas, this was 45, which is 60 centimeters squared. Uh, and there we go, that's the final answer. Um, as I said, it says show all your working. So uh, what I should do is actually make a note of, um, you know, the, the steps we took before we got here. So I'm going to do that quickly and just show you what that would look like. In fact, I realized all I really need to add with the, were these two lines explaining uh, that I found ED is equal to three times DC using uh, those areas. Okay, so that was the first question. On to the next one. This one says ABCD is a square with sides 10 centimeters. The vertices of the square line the circle C1. PQRS is a vertical, sorry, is a rectangle with sides 10 plus X centimeters and 10 take X centimeters, where X is between zero and 10. The vertices of the rectangle line the circle C2 prove that the area of C2 is greater than the area of C1. Let's go ahead and label the sides. Okay, so this is a square with an area of 100. This one has sides 10 plus X, 10 take X. Uh, in order to compare the areas, I think it's going to be enough to find the radii of each circle. Okay, so we're going to be using Pythagoras here. Um, and for this one, I think it's pretty straightforward as long as you're aware of how to use the Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, so this length is going to be half AB, which is five. This length is going to be half BC, which is five. And so to find, let's call this O, to find OB, uh, the radius, radius of C1 is going to be the hypotenuse of this right triangle, which is five squared, the, the square root of five squared plus five squared which is the square root of 50, which we can leave as is for now. For this right triangle, it is the case that uh, the, the diagonal still bisects, so this length will be half of 10 take x. So 10 take x on two, and this length up here, let's make a little bit of room, this length up here is going to be half of 10 plus x on two. Okay, which we could write slightly differently. Uh, let's do that down below though. So to find this length from O to Q, the radius of radius of C2, again, we're going to use Pythagoras. That is 10 take X on two. We could write as five take X on two. And we need to square that. So five take, or let's write half X actually. That's all squared and then this length, five plus a half X. So this is plus five plus a half X. Um, so the two legs squared equaled the hypotenuse squared. And then we need to do something with this expression in the square root, okay? So let's go ahead and expand the brackets inside this square root. So this would be five squared is 25 negative X Okay, so let's go ahead and write this out over here, just so it's clear how to explain it. I'm multiplying these double brackets. This is 25 take, um, take five on two X, take five on two X plus a quarter X squared, which simplifies to, this is like two and a half. So 25 take five X plus a quarter X squared. Okay, so that's what we get in here. And then expanding the other set of brackets, uh, that's going to be, the only difference there will be it's a, a plus five X in the middle. Okay, so 25 plus five X uh, plus a quarter X squared. Okay, and now let's see what we can do with this. Well, this negative 5x is going to cancel with this plus 5x here. Okay, once you simplify everything. And we will be left with 25 plus 25 is 50. 
a quarter x squared plus a quarter x squared is plus a half x squared. And this is really enough to show that the area of C2, the second one with the rectangle, will be greater than the area of C1 with the square because this, this term here must be greater than root 50 because we have this plus um, positive, this, is, this must be a positive number, positive integer, and we're adding it on to the radius of C1. So a circle with a larger radius will always have a larger area. So we could just finish off with something like that. So let's compare these two. Something like this, we can see root 50 plus a half x squared is greater than root 50, therefore the radius of C2 is greater than the radius of C1, therefore the area of C2 is greater than the area of C1. Uh, okay, so I hope you like those problems. Please leave a like if you found that helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, remember to send any questions you have. I love to help out where I can. And uh, yeah, as I said, see you in the next one. Bye for now.